Welcome everyone. Welcome back to Politics of Survival. This show I'm going to be having Fiorella Isabel join us and we're going to talk about lots of um, things that are going on in the geopolitical world. But first, you know, I wanted to talk about something briefly. I, you haven't seen me for a few days. I've been um, a little bit offline. Um, I was in the hospital last week, late last week, and I was in ICU and I'm okay. It was um, a heart issue. And uh, the reason I want to talk about it is not to, you know, gain any kind of sympathy or do any of that. I'm fine. I'm healthy. I'm here. Um, I wanted to talk about just what so many of us are facing, and that's access to affordable medical care. And one of the things that happened, first of all, was that I thought I was having a stress attack because my heart was out of rhythm and it was going too fast. It was an AFib. It did this for several hours. Um, because it didn't present like a normal heart attack, I didn't know that I was having one. I thought I was having a stress attack or panic attack. And this happens to many women because women's um, symptoms present differently than men's when they're having that kind of issue. When I was in ICU, um, I had an experience where I was on the table, they had me on IVs and my pressure started, my blood pressure dropped too low my vitals started dropping and the nurse had tears in her eyes and she held my hand and she said, I'm sorry, you're not responding to the medication. Is there someone we can call? And it was that moment where you really think about your life and your priorities. And, you know, I thought about my daughter and my pets and my friends and my supporters and, you know, you know, what's been going on in my life. Um, I've been under tremendous stress, as you know, um, because, you know, I had a political machine come at me from two, 2019 forward and 2020 when I came forward about Joe Biden and surviving sexual assault. Um, I've had a lot of vitriol directed at me from his campaign, from people that he hired and trolls. And, you know, they've gone after my life. They've gone after my career. They've gone after everything and my family as well. It's been a tough journey um, these last couple of years, but I am still here and I remain positive and I remain, you know, I really still stay with the fact that it was good that I came forward and that people knew. People that don't believe in me, that's their choice. If you choose to use vitriol, that's your choice as well. I There's nothing I can do about that if you um, troll me or whatever. But what I would like to say to other survivors is that, you know, you have support, you have a community, and I want to make the world better, and I want to make it better for other survivors to come forward. And I want to make it so that if survivors have to come forward about a, a famous person or a, a powerful person, that there's not this fear and shame shrouding for them. So, you know, I will continue to lift survivor voices. I will continue to talk about the geopolitical world and be against xenophobia, against russophobia, and I will always, you know, support people that look through a lens of openness and support independent con content creators. And I think that's really important. So to all of you out there, you know, that are survivors, you can do it. You can come forward. If you choose to stay silent, at least choose healing and um, find that however you can and your own access to justice. Meanwhile, I will keep fighting. I will not be silent. I will not be intimidated. And I am still standing.